Okay, hey guys, it's Pearsall here, and I'm here for the next part in the EAF1 Manager series, where we're trying to take Minardi to be the best team around. And after a mixed German Grand Prix last time, where we had second and fourth taken away from us within the last lap, we get the Hungarian Grand Prix, and it shouldn't really pay to our strengths because while Neil Oatley is developing new aero parts at the speed of light, our chassis, which is still a Gabriel Chadozi chassis, you know, is one of the worst in the grid so shouldn't and with this track being so chassis reliant yeah i don't really know how well we'll do around here but you never know we could easily do well um around here because obviously we know damon hill's history with this circuit with the arrows in 97 and if he is able to replicate that today then that'll be fantastic anyway so in this part of the season you know july august time you really don't get that much news confirmed from teams because most of it has already been confirmed. So I'm going to cut and see if we actually get any news. We'll probably get one bit, but I'm going to cut and see if we actually do get anything because, as I say, most of it's already been confirmed. So, yeah, I'll see you if we get any news. Okay, so after a fair bit of sponsor news, which wasn't really that interesting, um, Prost are rumoured to be using Ford ZTEC engines. Now, this would be weird... For two reasons, because one, well, they're using Peugeot engines at the minute, so it'd be weird because one, they were getting a slightly worse engine, so I don't know why they would downgrade their engines, and two, you know, Prost is a very French team, and why on earth they would scrap, you know, their French engine supplier in favour of an American one, it just doesn't seem right, because obviously we know that they had Olivier Panis, French driver, um, obviously led by Alain Prost, the Frenchman, French engines, and why they would, well they've already got rid of Olivier Panis, but why they would get rid of their French engine supplies is beyond me, because it would just ruin their French identity, but, um, yeah, I'll cut and see if there's any more developments on this. Alright then, so, here's what I've been waiting for, are Prost actually going to use Ford ZTEC engines? I'll be, I'll be surprised if they did, let's have a look. They have. Okay, um, um, well, as I say, I mean, that's ruined their French identity, their French, um, heritage. Um, it's a downgrade for them, but not much of a downgrade, but it is still a downgrade. And I think that means Ford ZTEX are now the most used engines now, because Jordan are using them, McLaren are using them, and Prost are. Well, Prost will be next year, so I think Ford ZTEX will now be the most used engines on the grid. Apart from maybe... Well, I think they'll be joint with Supertex, actually. And yet, there's Ford Cosworth engines, and no one's decided to use them. They'd rather use the worst Ford engines. You know, they could use the Ford Cosworth engines, which are... I think, in terms of performance, are actually not that bad, but... I just don't get it. I do not understand why all these teams are deciding to use Ford Z-Tech engines. There is no logic to it at all, considering how bad they are. Anyway, well, that's just, it doesn't matter because Prost aren't that major of a team, so I don't really think we'll have to worry out for them. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's comical, if anything. And I think there's only a couple of days till the Grand Prix. Oh, no, that's it. Well, there was only a couple of days till the Grand Prix and nothing came up. So, anyway, yeah, the Hungarian Grand Prix, as I've said, despite the fact we've got a very decent engine, two good drivers, well, one very good driver and one underperforming driver, and, you know, despite the fact Neil Oatley has developed new and improved aero parts at the speed of sound, the chassis, and as much as I like Gabriel Chadozi, he's not that good of a designer, to be honest, when it comes to designing chassis. And so his legacy is, I think, going to screw us over here, unfortunately. But, well, well, we'll see. We'll see how well Gabriel Chadozi chassis can do around the Hungarian Grand Prix. So... Yeah, I'll cut to the practice of that if it's interesting, or the qualifying reports. Okay, so here's the practice results from the Hungarian practice session. And, well, Schumacher's still first. Coulthard, as I say, Coulthard and Schumacher, I think this shows really how good the pair of them are and how those two definitely are the best of the rest. Because, look, Coulthard second, Schumacher third. And, you know, a way ahead of the next person, Fizzy Keller. So, really, because, I mean, where's Takaki? 10th, where's a Lacey? 17th, what happened to him? 
Okay, well, Lacey's not that bad in comparison to Coulthard, but, you know, you get the point how Coulthard and Schumacher are kind of in the league of their own, really. Um, well, Coulthard and Ralph Schumacher, I should say. Ralph Schumacher... Well, Coul Coulthard and Ralph Schumacher are in a league of their own, and Michael Schumacher, again, is in another league of his own, really. Um, and then, yeah, Jacques Villeneuve... Yeah, BARs are a bit weird, you know, sometimes they are really good, you know, like they're in top six, top four, and then sometimes they're just nowhere, but this track is another one which seems to play to its strengths, like Silverstone did. Another team which seems to have done well is Stewart, actually, because Stewart have been nowhere, I think, ever since pre-season testing, which, I think in pre-season testing, they were actually pretty quick, I think they were the fourth, third or fourth quickest team in pre-season testing, but ever since then they've been nowhere, but they're not doing too badly here. Eddie Irvine 8th, and considering Stewart, you know, not an amazing team using Peugeot engines, that's pretty good for them. Uh, where's the other Stewart? Truly down 13th. Well, okay, that's not too bad. But I think Stewart could actually make something of themselves here, especially if Eddie Irvine can actually keep up that sort of pace, if there's a couple of retirements ahead. We could see Stewart's actually doing very well for themselves. Um, but yeah, we'll go on to the qualifying report now. So qualifying around the Hungara ring here in Hungary has just ended and I'll take you through the results of the qualifying session now. On pole position for the 12th time this season out of all 12 races is Michael Schumacher and it's not much of a surprise really to be honest because Michael Schumacher's pace over the rest of the field is sublime. Second is his teammate Neil McEwen in the other Ferrari and Neil McEwen's pace in the Ferrari seems to have improved massively ever since his win last time out in Hockenheim. In third is a driver from the other Italian team, Minardi, and this time it's Mika Salo who's in third, lining up just behind the main Italian team of Ferrari. But interestingly, Mika Salo's lap time was within a tenth of Neil McEwen's, showing that there really could be a scrap for second place during tomorrow's race. Ralph Schumacher in the Williams is fourth, and while he wasn't best of the rest this time round, he's still showing that he is a fantastically quick driver and isn't to be snuffed at. Fifth is the other Minardi of Damon Hill, and while his lap time was a second off of his teammates, he still lines up very well in fifth, considering the chassis disadvantage that Minardi have over the rest of the field. The final position in the top six is taken up by David Coulthard in the Benetton. Jean Alessi in the other Benetton is seventh, while Takaki in the other Williams is eighth. Fisichella is ninth, with Barrichello tenth, and then Herbert in the other McLaren eleventh. Jacques Villeneuve, whose BAR impressed in practice, wasn't able to replicate that pace in qualifying as he's down at 12th. And it's the same story for both Stewarts as Trulli and Irvine at 13th and 14th, with the other BAR of Laurent Redon in 15th. Heinz Alfredson has a disappointing qualifying session in the Jordan to line up 16th, with Zanardi 17th in Salva. Both Prosser Diniz and Sonta are 18th and 19th, with Vert way down in 20th in the other Salva. Then making up the back row of the grid, unsurprisingly, are both arrow drivers, with De La Rosa getting ahead of his teammate Mark Genet for by no means the first time this season. And with De La Rosa saying a lap time just less than two seconds a lap quicker than Genet, it's clear who the quickest driver in the arrows team is. Okay, so here we are with Mike Gascoigne telling us that a two-stop strategy is the quickest for this race. And really, I'm hoping he's right with that two-stop strategy. Obviously, I've calculated the fuel up myself. But hopefully, he is right with that two-stop strategy because I really wasn't expecting this. But we are actually fairly quick around here. Obviously, you know, that was set on risk everything and on low fuel. But it still shows we have got pace around here. So I'm hoping Mike Gascoigne is right. So I don't want his strategy to kind of screw us over. But one thing we have got to our advantage is that the new side pods, well, the side pods and suspensions, um, Neil Oatley designed the fourth model last race, but obviously Mike Gascoigne wasn't able to manufacture enough of them quick enough. But now he finally has, so we'll be able to break out the fourth model of side pods and suspension, which, you know, should give us, you know, a further performance boost. And I have based my setup around the fourth model of 
side pods and, sus and suspension. So my setup is a compromise. If anything, my setup was compromised during you know practice and quality. Um, so yeah, well we'll see how it goes with that little performance boost there. Um, done the race strategy, got all the cars on zero. Well, now apart from the third car, which was used in pre-season testing and hasn't been touched since. When look, actually to be fair, that shows how far. Our cars advanced, you know, since the start of the season, like 93 engine, 95, 91s, aero, and then since then, thanks to our brilliant supplies and um, Neil Oatley, you know, 4, 6, I mean, like 99, 100, 100, 95s, 94s, shows how much our cars advanced, actually, over the course of the season. But anyway, let's stop looking at that. Let's actually, um, yeah, I've done the strategy, let's go. Oh, uh, push, uh, yeah, we'll push to try and defend our position. I'm going to miss the start of the race. I don't want to miss the start of the race. Come on. Okay, so, when are the lights going out? We can see that the wheel's twitching on Damon Hill's car. That's problem. Solo's holding up Damon Hill off the start there. Oh, wow, okay. Actually, Damon Hill got off to a lightning start, but Solo got off to a really slow start, and actually Solo's lost the place to um, Ralph Schumacher. And now Damon Hill's lost the place to David Coulthard. Okay. Um, okay, that wasn't the best start for Minardi there. Um, uh, Michael Schumacher. Has he been passed by Neil McEwen? I think he's got past Neil McEwen again, has he? Oh, yes, just about. But interestingly, Neil McEwen was able to jump Schumacher at the start, you know, which we saw that happen in Australia. And, you know, and it happened again. But Schumacher is able to get past, you know, quite easily, unlike in Australia. And the Arrows has got past a couple of cars there, a couple of Stewarts, Prost, Salvers, I think. Uh, a BAR was there as well. Uh, which, that's number 15. Is that Genet? I think that's Genet actually got off to a fantastic start. Probably the best start of the entire grid. And as you can see, Neil McEwen there in second, which is really the best he can ever hope for, because... Well, I mean, to be fair, he's an EA employee, came into the sport, bam, no no karting, no GP2. Well, GP2 wasn't around then, um, in the year 2000, but still, nothing, and then just instantly just goes, bam, from an EA employee into a Formula 1 role. And to be fair, bearing that in mind, he's actually done very well for himself. And as you can see, that Arrows is still holding up a train. It is Mark Genet, because actually De Rosa, it says he's in last, so Genet... Is actually doing fantastically there. And we got Ricardo Zonta and a Prost. He's being helped. Well, I mean, he's, he's in a train, which is led by Genet. And I think that's really the real interesting point. Can Genet hold that? I believe, I think that might be 16th place he's in. Solo still in fourth. Um, no movements for the Minardi guys. Fourth and sixth were in at the minute. And really, the problem is, is everyone ahead of us. I was about to say everyone ahead of us is quicker than us, but we've just got past McEwen and Schumacher. Oh, don't tell me Neil McEwen's going to do what he has done the rest of the season. Oh, God, our guys are still on push. I forgot about that. Okay, that could be why we got past everyone then. What, uh, yeah, where's Damon Hill? Where is he? Fourth. That's okay, that's fine. That's good. Um, is Neil McEwen going to do what he has done the rest of the season, which is just, you know, he's... He'll be in second, then in first, and then seventeenth. He'll jump all over the place. But actually, you know, while he's gone from first to fourth, he is still maintaining fourth. I think his consistency is the thing that's improved the most over the course of the season, because his consistency and pace was well just nowhere, and now, well, consistently in fourth. Because we're actually ahead of Ferrari. Just I think we're actually holding him up because the timing suggests we're only just ahead of him. Yeah. Fourth and fifth, right, okay, well, let's see if we can try and defend these positions, because, well, we're not going to get past Michael Schumacher, Ralph Schumacher would be very difficult to get past, Neil McEwen, possibly, um, everyone else, though, will be difficult to get past, as you can see, Genet's fallen from 16th, where, or, you know, wherever he was, um, into, well, what was 22nd, now 21st, because Eddie Irvine, a Peugeot engine failure, maybe that's why, um, the Pros have got rid of their, uh, maybe that's why the Pros have got rid of their Peugeot engines, because, well, I mean, maybe there's an unreliability, no, there's a reliability issue, maybe. I mean, I know it's on the Stewart, not on the Pros, but I think mean, that's a shame, actually, because in practice, Eddie Irvine showed a lot of pace, wasn't it, 8th in the Stewart? 
Sherlock Potential says now just left to Trulli. And to be fair, Trulli has had a lot of bad luck in that Stuart. And now it's the turn of Eddie Irvine to get that bad luck. And I hope Trulli can actually do well for himself this race. I'm not really paying attention to Minardi's, where are we? Fourth and fifth. Okay, that's fine. Going into the pits, that's cool. Um, De La Rosa's retired with an engine failure. Oh, an arrow's engine failure, that's interesting. A uh, Frenson with a driver error. Johnny Herbert with a... F you wouldn't expect McLaren's to run out of fuel. That's the last thing you'd expect to happen to McLaren, to misjudge the fuel needed. Or maybe Herbert was just a bit, um, you know, a bit throttle happy and burned up a bit more than McLaren expected. I and mean, it looks like we've been jumped by Barrichello. Hopefully he'll be into the pits soon. And same for Fizzy Keller, actually. And Neil McEwen, oh, as I said, he was way down. He was in 18th. I was about to say, look, look at his consistency. It's actually an engine failure, but still... The, the fact of the matter is, is he was temporarily running in 18th before he had an engine failure. Um, you see, as I said, it's always, you know, Schumacher's teammate that gets the unreliability. In Germany, that wasn't the case, but now we're back to tradition. Schumacher's running fine, and McEwen isn't. Um, Fizzy Keller's still doing very well for himself. A lacy of a bargeal failure, okay, that's that's quite bad for him, but I don't think he was running that high up. And Fizzy Keller actually is doing very well. Obviously, despite the fact Neil Oatley isn't at the team anymore, they do still have his chassis. So Fizzy Keller and, and Herbert, well, apart from the fact he's retired, do have the best chassis on the grid, well, for the rest of the season anyway. So maybe that's why Fizzy Keller's got some pace. Uh, what happened to Ralph Schumacher? Oh, okay, just, okay, that was a bit odd. So, <laughs> Michael Schumacher's three laps ahead of everyone. Uh, Barry Keller's out of a tyre failure. That's good because he was getting a bit near us and it was quite worrying what's happened to Fizzy Keller. Okay. You see, the, the time is going so everyone's just jumping around all over the place. In fact, actually, there's only 10 runners left. Or well, no, 11 runners left, rather. Well, now, now there's 10 runners left because there's a Ford Z Tech failure um, for Fizzy Keller. So, both McLaren's are out right. Okay, if we can finish behind both Schumachers, that's fine. Is, is David Coulthard I'm worrying about? How close is Coulthard? Seven, seven seconds behind. Okay, that's he's quite close then. So we do have to worry about him, but I reckon we can outpace Coulthard if we need to. But, you know, both Schumachers, they're going to run off into the distance. We don't need to worry about them. Uh, Takaki's in sixth. Actually, he's done well for himself. Truly in seventh. I kind of hope someone retires just to promote Trulli into the points and Stuart into the points. Uh, oh, that's happened as well. Who's that? Raul Schumacher with, an in with a suspension failure. And I thought second was just impossible for us and now it's very possible. All we got to worry about is David Coulthard actually. Um, okay, so here's a stick. So. Only seven runners left with, you know, it depends, it depends who you're looking at, how many laps to go. But, you know, ten laps to go from Sarlo's perspective. There's a seven runners left. And, well, okay, Schumacher's bound to win. We should hold second, Sarlo should hold second. Coulthard should hold third, Damon should hold fourth. Really, I think everyone should hold position, to be honest, unless there's another retirement. And to be fair, if Radon gets in the points... Oh, Coulthard's got passed. Okay, okay, right. We're gonna, we're gonna do this because really, we're not really gonna. Even if we retire, we're not gonna drop out the. Well, okay, we we will drop out the points, but you know, only just. Sala's got back past Coulthard. Okay, Michael Schumacher's one was there any doubt? And we're on push, but yet David Coulthard is actually showing how quick he is. We'll get it from an onboard perspective. And yeah, we're on the last lap. We'll tell Solo to risk everything, but really, we were ahead of Coulthard. He's got back past us, and that shows how quick he is because the Benetton, shown through Jean Alesi, isn't that amazing of a car. But David Coulthard, he's dragged it around. He's done very well for himself because he's going to take second. And he's stuck behind us for most of the race, but right at the end, when it counted. He's going to take second, and yeah, he's going to take second. Congrats to David Coulthard there. He deserves it. He's 
drove him very well. Mikasalo is in third, and Damon Hill should take fourth. And let's run board for him. Let's see. He squandered a few chances this season, and he's not going to waste this one. A fourth place, a very solid finish for Damon Hill. You know, I expected better from him when I signed him this season, but the fact of the matter is, is you know, he's due to retire in real life. He did retire in 99. We'd taken him past when he was going to retire. And so, you know, that's fair enough, to be honest, that his pace isn't that good. Um, at least in comparison to Salo, anyway. Well, okay, so here's a stick. So Michael Schumacher won, predictably. David Coulthard second, showing how good of a driver he really is, to be honest. Because he's been able to drag that Benetton places that Jean Lacy time and time again hasn't. I mean, to be fair, Lacy had a bargeable failure at this race, but still. Takaki fifth, well, okay. Mikasalo third, Damon Hill fourth. Takaki fifth, actually not too bad for Takaki. Actually beat his teammate. I mean, sure his teammate has had a suspension failure, but still. And truly, actually, you know, it shows... I mean, it, it doesn't really show that Stuart has pace, because... To be fair, they finished over a minute behind Takaki, and you know they're second to last of the finishers. But I'm I'm happy for Stewart because they got points, and they were a decent team last year. And Paul Stewart even got team manager of the year last year. And in preseason testing, they showed their pace hasn't translated this season. And they, I kind of do feel sorry for them. It's the only team really on the grid I do feel sorry for. Well, them and McLaren, but. I can't feel sorry for McLaren, but at the same time, they're kind of similar to us on pace, so <laughs> I'm kind of glad in a way. But Stuart is the team I really do feel sorry for, but, as we've already said, they're going to have Solo and Hill next year as their two drivers. And we've seen how well they've done for us. So, you know, and they're also going to have uh, Massimo Cusimano as their commercial manager, so Stuart, Stuart could well move up next year, I hope so anyway. Um, got some emails, yada yada yada. Well, Fry really are leading the tech race then. Fry had the most advanced chassis. I thought that was McLaren. Now, surely it has to be McLaren. Oh, okay. I'm surely logically it has to be McLaren. 2.1 prize money, 2.1 million dollars prize money. That is very nice. Thank you, Stefano Domenicali, for telling us that, putting a smile back on our face. Um,. And we've got a test day around Silverstone, won't bother with that. Instead, we've got the Belgian Grand Prix. And now, this should actually, obviously, play to our strengths. Obviously, massive straights, which plays to, you know, a power advantage, Mercedes-Benz engine advantage, which should really help us out. And, you know, what is still a tight and twisty track, massive reliance on straights should play well to us, hopefully. But we'll see how well that goes. But as you say, I mean, we weren't meant to do that well, logically we weren't meant to do that well in Hungary, but yet we got third and fourth. So, there you go, um, Drivers Championship. Has Michael Schumacher won it? Like, has he won it already? How many races are there left? Four races left, how many points ahead is he? No, he hasn't won it yet, but he could win it next race. Okay, well, I mean, to be fair, He's not going to lose the championship from here, is he? But he hasn't definitively won it. But next race, if he wins, then he's won it. Yeah. Raul Schumacher second. And yeah, Raul Schumacher second. Mika Salo third. Um, Mika Salo, I've no idea how he's done so well in the Drivers' Championship. I keep on saying Schumacher and Coulthard are in a league of their own. But yeah, Salo separating them in the Drivers' ch in the Drivers' Championship, so I don't really know. I think you might have to put Salo in that league, really. Constructors, we're second. Well, of course, Williams only got a fifth place this race, and we got third and fourth. Okay, well, I think, have Ferrari won the Constructors? No, they haven't won the Constructors, but again, if, you know, they could easily win it next race. So, yeah, and, well, Stuart, yeah, again, I feel sorry for Stuart. They were such a good team last year. And now look, but to be fair, the only teams they are behind are ones which have, apart from Minardi, are the teams which have much bigger budgets than them. Well, I mean, Minardi have a much bigger budget now. I mean, look how much money we've got. But BAR joined last year as the richest team. McLaren, Jordan, Benton, Williams, Ferrari, they've all got big money in them. Or maybe not Jordan so much, but 
still. Um, yeah. And Harris still haven't scored points. Okay. Great for the manager ratings. We're ahead of Jean Todd. Yeah, overtaken Jean Todd. I don't know whether that's going to last till the end of the season. But obviously there's three championships I want to win. I hope to win as a Minardi manager. Um, and that's the Constructors' Championship, first and foremost. The Drivers' Championship would be a nice bonus. Well, there also be another nice bonus is if I win the team manager. But I might actually win that this year. But to th I think Jean Todd will win it, to be honest. But at the minute, it's looking like we could. Apparently, on points, we're way ahead. Ron Dare still rated the worst. And Paul Stewart, a far cry, he was rated the best manager last year and now second worst. Well, anyway, yeah, Belgian Grand Prix, I've already said, should play to our advantages. High speed, long straights, should play to our advantage, hopefully. And yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. You know, the legendary Spa Grand Prix. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So I'll see you then.